The Oath Keeper. The Grim Dawn Forgotten Gauntlet expansion mastery is one of the most flexible in the game and offers a variety of endgame playstyles, like the Virus Might Skater, which overall is probably the fastest build in the game, a spin to win build with the Eye Reckoning skill, which you can basically play in all the beautiful colors of the rainbow, and the Aegis of Min here, Captain America Shield Throw, which you can also use to perfectly kite down Celestials. Other skills include Judgment with its beautiful AoE and Trash Mob Suction, the Righteous Fervor Default Attack Replacer as well as two of poor skills, with which and a bit of skill and a little bit more of luck, you can even defeat Shard 50 in the Shadow Realm after like 12 hours and 45 minutes at level 78. 12 minutes, uh, 12 hours 45, there we go. As well as the Guardians of Empyrean, of which you can get up to 5 total, allowing for many different player skill pet builds. Of course, multiple iterations with different damage times and different gear requirements exist for all of these builds. This is Grim Dawn after all. You can also use the Oathkeeper as a support monster for many builds as it provides debuffs for physical, fire, acid poison, vitality and bleeding damage. But how do you level an Oathkeeper efficiently to endgame? Well, this video will hopefully answer this question for you. As with all of my mastery leveling guides, don't forget to check out timestamps as well as a couple of endgame Oathkeeper builds down below in the description of this video. So the best leveling skill for Oathkeeper is by far Virus Might, as well as its Fire Trail, Volcanic Stride. Why is that so good? What well, is mobility and AoE basically in one skill, and also the Fire Trail from Volcanic Stride stacks. At least the Flat Fire does, the Burn Damage does not. But still, like stacking this Flat Fire damage here is gonna increase your damage by a lot, especially when you have like low cooldown on this. By default, the cooldown of Virus Might is 3.6 seconds. You can however use Tectonic Shift to reduce that by 1.2 down to 2.4 seconds and then there are also two items that you can use to reduce that even further. Number one is the Zarathul Zalans Archive which will reduce Virus Might by another 0.5 seconds uh, so we're down to 1.9 now. And then you also have Skybreaker's Circlet which reduces Virus Might by another 0.5 seconds so you're down to 1.4 seconds now without like any global CDR. The Skybreaker Circlet however requires you to sign with Death's Vigil because Sister Bravna is basically a faction boss from the Commons Chosen faction which you will be able to find and fight in the Fort Heron in Act 3. Whereas Zalthazen is there for everybody to kill, he is the sorcerer protecting the gates in misery in the Steps of Torment. Now the big problem with Virus Might though is that this one needs like 16 points, 12 points, 12 points, and you need like 32 or like 20 points up to Volcanic Stride, right? So all of these points will require you to be level around 25. So you can like start playing Virus Might at some point between like 20 to 30, I would say, usually. And also these items don't drop before level 20. On top of that, by the time that you are in Act 3, you're probably also going to be rather level 30 and not 20 anymore anyway. So how do you level an Oathkeeper before, say, level 20 to 25? To be honest, the fastest way for me would be to just use another mastery. If you are already set on your second mastery, if you already like know which other mastery you want to play together with your Oathkeeper, then I would suggest you to use your second mastery and the skill of your second mastery of your choice, or like the leveling skill that I showed you guys in my other videos, to level the Oathkeeper from like level 1 to 20 or like 25, until you have like all the points to level with Fire Smite and also like maybe one or two of these items that I just showed you. However, if you would like to level with an Oathkeeper only because you're like not set on your secondary mastery yet, then I'm gonna show you like another way to level from level 1 to 20 here as well. Now I did level a couple of characters from like level 1 to 20, including my very very old Solo Cell Found Oathkeeper video I have on YouTube as well, right? And what I concluded is that a two-hander is actually not that great for Oathkeepers. Like usually on many classes, or like almost all classes, you kind of like want to go for that have his great sword right away. Um, but not in the case of Oathkeeper, like Safeguard as an ability just gives you enough damage to kind of compensate not having a two-hander. It doesn't quite compensate it for default attacks, but I mean, you cannot use Aegis of Men here without a shield. And Aegis of Men here is actually, early on, the best damage ability that Oathkeeper has. So using a shield and also actually having a good shield with like high attack is pretty important early on for an Oathkeeper. You have to also remember that a big part of Aegis of Men here's damage is its weapon damage and that weapon damage is going to be the shield's weapon damage. So you will have to try to look for a shield that has as much damage as possible early on. And basically the perfect shield for that would be Bernard's Slightly Chewed Buckler. This is a level 6 shield that you can get very very early on near the 
uh, burial cave, right? There's like the old dump actually. And here in the old dump, which is like next to the low crossing rift, you will have three spawn locations for the Prutid Den. Like it will have a 100% spawn chance in one of these three locations. So if you don't find it here or here, just look here, for example, right? And there's gonna be like a small rat boss, whatever it's called, in there. I think Pusquill. And that one does not only drop like a one-handed mace, but it also drops a shield. And that shield is Bernard's slightly chewed buckler. And that's actually like really, really good because like flat 34 physical damage is way more than anything else on this level, like at this level. And this can carry you basically all the way to level 15-ish, I would say. And around level 15 to 20, you're probably gonna find like a shield with a higher damage, like a higher base damage. But yeah, like my fastest run I had when I just straight away went for that shield after like doing the first quest. And you're basically around level 6 anyway when you're like fighting that mob. So you can equip that shield right away. And that's pretty good for like the remainder of your run then. Or at least for Act 1. There was actually one run where I tried leveling with their two-hander early on as well. But I immediately stopped using a two-hander once like Barak dropped his bloody arm. Because honestly, like Barok's bloody arm and also the option to go with Allman's axe together with the slightly shoot buckler just makes sword and board leveling for Oathkeeper so much better early on than like using a two-hander. Okay, now how do you actually allocate these skill points, right? So what you want to do is you want to put one point into Angus of Menhir per level. You want to put one point down into the Oathkeeper mastery per level. And then a third point either goes into the mastery or goes like into another skill you also want to take. So for level 1 you want to put one point here, one point into Agus of Menhir and one point into Safeguard. Safeguard because those also enhances your default attacks and you're gonna use some of them whenever your Agus is on cooldown, right? So there's like no way to like not smack your enemies in between. You have to use that and for that Safeguard actually is pretty decent. And now for level 2 or rather 3, right? You're gonna like get this for level 2. Like this is gonna be level 3 now. 1, 2, 3, level 4 gonna look like this. At level 5 you're gonna get Avenging Shield actually as well. So 1, 1, 1. At level 6 I would recommend you to get 1 point here, 1 point here, 1 point here. And 7 also like 1 here, 1 here, 1 here. Actually you wanna get Smite and Presence of Virtue as 1 pointers. This one for energy regen, offensive ability and also the chance for bleeding and internal trauma damage. And Smite because it is a weapon pool skill which means it will only proc from like default attacks. But as I said earlier, like you're gonna have to use some in between. And also they recently, or like kinda recently, increased the chances of these from 8% up to 12% for level 1. So actually they are better while leveling than before. And this one also has 3 targets. So this is like some additional AoE as well for your build. Now at some point between, I would say 8 and 10, you wanna put like 3 more points into Avenging Shield. Like Avenging Shield gives you plus 1 targets to your... Um, eggs of Minor, so it like basically lets it bounce and I found three targets total to be like the best for like early leveling so you want to like have four points here because like gonna get like plus one targets for like one point here which is like really really efficient like you have to get this absolutely and then you need like three more points here basically a whole level to put this to like two targets so at some point between level eight and ten I would push this to four points probably not eight maybe like nine or 10 so like let's put one more here and then like two here and that's like level eight right now at level nine maybe you also like want to get virus might first so level nine would be like this and now at level 10 push like three points here in one level because like like putting one or two points here is not going to do anything right you need to like put three points here at once otherwise uh the points are kind of wasted so this is level 10 right so for level 11 we're gonna do it like this just proceed as earlier and also you want to like maybe get like a point of resilience i mean i wouldn't say it's that necessary for like leveling this early on but if you're especially playing hardcore or like you're kind of new to the game i think you should take resilience even this early on now let's proceed with like one point here right two points here one point here two points here um here at 15 points you kind of can take haven um as like a one pointer it's fine to take, like you're using this path anyway, like this uh, skill here anyway. Uh, Haven, right, that's like part of this toggle, like whenever you have this toggle up, Haven will be in effect as well. So 1, 1, 1 would be level 14 here, and then you proceed with like one more point here, two points here, one here, 
to here. Now here at level 16 you actually don't want to put the third point here obviously, but rather to reprisal. And then at level 17 you also want to get like Volcanic Stride. And at level 18 you would like to get Aegis of Manor Max and also like a point into Shattering Smash. Now whenever you feel like you have for example energy issues, you can always deviate a little bit from that allocation here and put more points into Presence of Virtue. Like Presence of Virtue does give you like more offensive ability as well as energy. So yeah, if you feel like you're like not hitting enemies because your OA is too low or you're like running out of energy because you don't have enough energy regen, feel free to put like more points into Presence of Virtue. Also, if you feel like you still don't have enough AoE on your Aegis of Minier, you can also like up this to 7 points or even 10 points for like four more or like three more targets that's also like definitely possible to do but yeah skill allocation like this is what i usually did up to like level 18 and this is what i've personally found to be best and like more efficient or like more balanced all around and also after this i would rather put more points of like virus smite and volcanic stride for aoe rather than avenging shield for like level 19 or 20 and like going forth until the level whenever you want to do like do the switch over to virus smite and I would suggest to do that at around level 25 probably. So for the levels 19 to 25, I would probably just like put, yeah, like one or two more points here, uh, one or two more points here, and also like put some points into Presence of Virtue. Like you wanna basically put points into all of these three things and also like maybe one point into Rebuke while like proceeding here up to like 30 points. I mean, at level 25, you're gonna be down to 175 points here. So this would be an example for a level 25 pre wire smite switch build in this case. And I'm gonna show you like how to proceed with wire smite from level 25 on here in a second. But before that, I'm gonna like show you how to gear for this or like which gear to like look out for at this like level 1 to 25, how to survive this like, yeah, level 1 to 25 struggle that Oathkeeper is actually until level 25. So this is one of my example builds I made. This is a level 18 Oathkeeper in this case. And you can already see that I found another upgrade for my Bernard's Buckler. But usually you will just like go with Bernard's Buckler for like a pretty long time, right? For shoulders, you can use Isaac's Borders, which you will always find in Isaac's stash. For the helmet, I mean, you can like just use whatever you find or what is like target farmable or like rather what is like a pretty high percent of a chance is Milton's Cask, right? Which drops from Milton. For the weapon, you can start out with Orman's Axe and then also use Baroque's Bloody Arm if you get it from him. Other items you can use are Piscule's Tail. I mean, you gotta kill him anyway because of the shield. After that, you can also use Mutant Bludgeons in like Act 1 at level 18 plus. These are pretty nice and if they drop like with additional either like physical or fire damage affixes, those are pretty good to use. And for the ring, as with all characters, you can always use the Slith Primer Ring, which you will get from Torvin in Act 1 next to the White Mile Rift. Other than that, just look out for like anything that gives you like resistances. Resistances are like the top uh, number one priority in Grim Dawn for like basically all armor pieces. Uh, on boots, you should probably also like try to get some movement speed. Like these don't have movement speed, that's kind of bad. As for the components, usually you should just like try to use all components that you can. ASAP, like Polish Emerald, actually decent component early on, like very, very easy to find as well. Bristopher, pretty good as well can be used like freely and once you're like around level 20 and you have rescued the smith you should try to make some of these like baseline craftable components like anti venom soap, dense fur, molten skin, rigid shell, resilient plating or a silk swatch for your shoulder piece for example or even your uh, leg armor. For metals you can freely use corpse dust that you find in a way or also soul shards that you will find like a little bit later on rather like in act 2 and also you could craft a wardstone, which is pretty nice, or an aether soul as well as a black tallow, which you will be able to like rather craft a little bit later, probably like around Act 3, because you need like the faction um, blueprint for those from Common Chosen or Death's Vigil. For weapons, you can either just use more attack, like more offensive uh, components like Chipped Claw or Searing Ember, also Gent Flint with its fire damage as well as fire aura, works pretty nicely here for offense. Or you can opt for more defense, and for defense, two actually are really really great like imbued silver for like chaos and bleeding resistance as well as purified salt for aether and life leash resistance are really really great but these also need you to get a blueprint first also another really really good component early on which is kind of rare to find there is the unholy inscription because this one has 10 percent wit and 15 percent bleed resistance and that's like a lot in one component components overall are a pretty big topic in grim dawn just like devotions are or like masteries are 
So if you are interested in like seeing more stuff about components, check out my components video as well. I won't talk too much here about components. It's gonna like just make the video way too long. Now Grim Dawn doesn't only have masteries, it also has devotions. And devotions can be a little bit overwhelming at first, obviously, because these are like lots of devotions that you can like choose from. But for an Oathkeeper early on, you have several options. Like if you want to get more damage ASAP and you want to like play around physical damage, then for example the bull would be pretty nice or also the assassin's mark because the assassin's mark reduces enemy physical resistance if you want to rather focus on more fire damage i would suggest you to go for the imp especially when you're like trying to go for a wire smite build because this one has no cooldown and if you put it onto wire smite later then the burning tray like the fire tray of wire smite will proc this one as well and because this one has no cooldown basically will like proc all the time and like stack even more on top of the fire that's also stacking so this is like a lot of damage actually for fire smite another devotion for fire that you could also go for or like aim for is flame torrent this is another like active devotion thing here also like the way these de active devotions work is like you put these onto like a skill of your choice right and then whenever you use that skill that skill will have a chance to proc this devotion on top also note that the chance on attack like the percent chance that these proc with can be very different depending on like which skill that you connect these to. Other solid like all around devotions are especially early on are the Jackal or and the blue defensive tree, Satyr's Guide or Eel. So you can also like just choose to go for one of these. These don't have like any actors but they're still like really really solid and especially the total speed and movement speed on these is really really nice to have early on because early on you're kind of slow if you don't get like movement speed from devotions. Another awesome tier 1 devotion defensively and also for more love seal is the ghoul. Like this one is very very great for basically any weapon damage based build and weapon damage you do deal when you're playing both wire smite or agus of men here early on. So this is really good as well. For like love steel and also with a circuit breaker that activates whenever you drop below 45% health giving you even more love steel and more physical resistance as well as some attack speed. Another devotion you should aim for when you're playing fire is the average fire. So this one is a tier 2 devotion, which means that you will have to have more than just one affinity for this ready. So you need like, for example, more green, such as spider. Spider is like a pretty nice all around green devotion. So why not pick that one? And then you just can pick the Solar's Witchblade, right? Which gives you a proc that has fire resistance reduction and also chaos resistance reduction. So if you're playing fire, this is basically one of the mandatory devotions to take for you. But if you are at around level 25 and you just finished Act 1 and got like all 7 Devotion Shrines in Act 1 and maybe like 1 from Act 2 as well, your Devotions could look something like this for example. Alternatively it could also look like this. And with your next 2 points you would go for the Imp, the Aether Fire and connect this to your Virus Might. And then take for example the Hawk to be able to go for your Witchblade which then will help you out with fire damage. If you however want to go for Physical instead, you should in my opinion start out with Bull and Assassin's Blade at like 11 devotion points like this. For attributes, I would say just follow the general rule which is put all points into physique unless you need cunning or spirit to equip gear. So 24 points into physique here, 0 in cunning, spirit, 0 in spirit here for the in this case. Uh, if you however need more cunning or spirit to like equip some gear, feel free to like put some points into cunning and spirit while leveling. And also if you're like focusing more on physical, you could also like put a little bit more points into cunning nevertheless. Now there are two more things I want to highlight here and I'm going to show you this at this level 27 pre virus smite Oathkeeper. Number one is the Kirin's Skybreaker. I actually found one while going through the Undercity. So if you find one while going through the Undercity, which you have to do anyways when you want to get the quest for Kirin in the Sceptre Torment, then you should just use it. Also more importantly, if you get Roman Proxy Sting on your way to Olakovia in the first Beehive, then use it. It's really great. Plus 3 to Avenging Shield basically saves your whole level on the Avenging Shield skill. Gives you plus 1 target for free basically. And also 60% additional weapon damage to Agus of Manor is great as well. So yeah, this level 27 Oathkeeper for which I will drop the link down below as well is in my opinion like the perfect example for a pre virus smite Oathkeeper. I also have one last pre virus smite Grim Tools here for you as well. Now, this is a level 32 pre virus smite Oathkeeper that I played because I only dropped a like level 35 version of the Skybreaker circlet and also I got like a Zerth Zealand's archive which was around 30 or like 28 as well and because of that I didn't like do the switch to virus might actually until level 35 I hope you're gonna be a little bit luckier with the Skybreaker circlet 
so that you can actually use virus might earlier than that. But note that not only the base of the item affects the item level, but also the affixes of the items can affect the level of the item. Like even though maybe a level is a level 20 item, because it has a certain affix that has a level 28 for example, the item overall will need the 28 to equip them. And here in this case you can see that I also switch around my weapon. I'm using now a Ravna's Claw. Ravna's Claw obviously drops from Ravna, the Swarm Queen of the Herpaderp Hive. And I mean this one is perfect if you like wanna continue playing an Acid Oath Keeper. But yeah, that's like another build, that's like not something we're gonna talk about here. That said, even for Fire Oath Keeper, for this very specific level, just having this to like give you more damage towards Agus of Men here was actually like pretty good, mostly because of the plus two to make Agus of Men here. Like the acid and like physical to acid conversion doesn't like benefit this build in particular at all. And if you're playing acid, as I said, then it's like really great. This is what I used until like I was able to finally switch over to Fire Smite. And the next item I want to highlight here is the Bolvar's Pendant. Bolvar's Pendant drops from Bolvar in the Blood Grove, and that's not a 100% chance either, but it does have plus one all skills to Oath Keepers, so if you get this amulet, you should probably use it pretty much from now on all the way, because you can also like use this for Virus Smite, that's pretty good as well for Virus Smite, just because of like plus one all skills, like plus one all skills is always useful, even though this item doesn't really like give you any fire damage or like physical damage, and also like just supports more like vitality and bleeding in general, but it's still good. Also, the Flesh Warp Defender is a shield that also can drop in Act 3 from like the Aether Warped Trolls there. And this one is really nice as well because it does reduce the skill recharge of Judgment. It also gives you physical to fire conversion as well as damage reduction to Judgment. So if you find this shield before you want to switch over to Wire Smite, then you should use this alongside Judgment. It also has a base fire damage and also converts physical to fire globally, so this will make your Aegis deal even more fire damage instead of physical. So you can find a link to this down below as well, and now we're gonna finally take a look at the Virus Smite build. Now once you get to find Zalthuzelans in the Steps of Torment, and he didn't drop this archive for you yet, just run him again until he drops it for you, and once you have this archive, make sure that you get like the right one, there are like two different ones, one for like Black Holder Cocktail and this one for Virus Smite. Once you get this one for Virus Smite, you can do basically the switch around to Virus Smite like this. This would be like a level 26 example for a Virus Smite spec now. And after this, you just continue on to like your 50 points here. So you wanna like get the Guardians actually, like the Guardians of Empyrean are pretty nice as well. Some people even say that you should also like max them out here for leveling, which you can do, you don't have to. Same thing for like Alpha Reckoning, you can use Alpha Reckoning in between, especially like if you don't have the like cooldown on Virus Smite from like the offhand as well as the helmet, then you can level with like Virus Smite and Alpha Reckoning as a filler in between if you would like to do that. First of all, I'm gonna like just show you how to level with Virus Smite only. So, I mean, you just basically max Virus Smite out, right? You have like one part here, put like maybe some more points here into Presence of Virtue for like your energy regen. Maybe like to do like one point here per level and like two down here. So like one, two, one, two. And you basically just do this until you are at the cap here. And once you are at like 50 points here, you can also use your exclusive and also your guardians. And now why did I not choose guardians before 50 levels here? Well, I mean, you can like put a one pointer here, sure, that's like fine. But you don't have to like put more points here, in my opinion. You just need to put points into Celestine Presence, because this is like your actual damage amplification. Like this is what gives you more damage because of resistance reduction. Like Celestine Presence has up to 30% fire resistance reduction. And also Divine Mandate is an exclusive, which gives you like more fire percent damage and also crit damage. That's really really great for like any physical or fire based Oathkeeper. Other than that, I would also always spec Haven up to 3 points after this point. And then also try to grab Judgment to like make your enemies get sucked in by the Judgment and to basically, well, make sure that all of your enemies are like close to your fire trail. And what you can do here like for now is just like 1-1-1. Uh, Heart of Wrath also pretty nice to like proc Devotions. Heart of Wrath basically works as an aura around you after you cast Judgment, Heart of Wrath will stick around. And this actually also does give you like plus 2 to Heart of Wrath. So you could also like get up 
how the round a little bit earlier. Like you could spec it to the judgment like once you hit 40 pawns here, like 1-1-1 one, 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 or even more. That's totally fine. Um, at this point though, like after you've maxed out these two, which are like really, really important. Like these are the two next important things to max out in my opinion. Then you could like put more pawns to the judgment if you would so like to. This one for area and also physical damage, which isn't necessarily that great because you probably would like to play this as a fire build instead as physical. Crushing Verdict is really really great because it does have a DA reduction, so like if you put this higher up, this also affects bosses even though they don't get sucked in, right? So this one reduces defensive ability from everything, even bosses, and this will make you crit more reliably. And Heart of Wrath, well, just gets, gets you like more aura damage, so this is pretty nice as well, and I would probably max this out as well. Um, the base skill, yeah, I don't know, you can just leave it as a 1.2 to be honest. Like one max, max is pretty good here, or like one soft cap, hard cap would be pretty good here. After this, another skill that is really, really good nice as well for you is Ascension. I don't think Ascension is actually needed before all of this, because you just, first of all, want to get like your damage up, and as long as you don't get hit by like some specific abilities, and also like you get proper gear with like proper armor, proper defenses, proper resistances, then you shouldn't have like any defensive problems at all on an Oath Keeper, especially when you're playing normal. On Veteran, it might be like a little bit harder, but it should also be doable like this. Moving on to, say, higher difficulties or so like harder acts, you want to spec into Ascension as well. And Ascension does have basically flat absorption, and flat absorption is really, really good, especially early on and also later for like shotgun abilities or like trash that's like hitting you. Also, on top of that, Ascension has the Clarity of Purpose skill attached to it, which has CC resistances as well as offensive ability, like percent offensive ability while Ascension is up. One point here gives you like 4% and 15% CC resistances, which is like really, really great. Also, 100% like energy leech and life leech resistance is awesome. And you can see that like the points after that don't give you like that much more value. They're still like okay, but like a one pointer is usually enough. And last but not least, I would also probably put resilience up to five points because resilience at five is like really, really awesome. And yeah, this is basically all you need to level an Oathkeeper pretty much up to end game. At least that's like all you need from the Oathkeeper tree. Also note that this would already put this down to 74 points available only. So this is like a little 60, 70 spec already. Um, let's try to put this down again to say around a level 50 spec, which means we'll have to like drop these down to like 100 points here. So something like this would be in my opinion the ideal way for like a fire wire smiter at level around 50. If you play only Oathkeeper until level 50 that's totally fine, you don't need to like choose your second class before level 50. Usually I pick them around level 40 maybe, so like you could also like pull some of these points here and there and I like, use them for a secondary class before this level, but level 50 is still like totally fine to like go solo class with. Now how would your devotions look like at level around level 50? Well at around level 50 you should probably be at like the expansion acts in normal or even already in elite. So depending on like how you play, how far you've played in normal or like if you proceed in elite, you probably will have at around 30 to maybe 35 devotion points. And something like this was like your core for a fire spec, which already needs like 18 points. Now on top of this, you also want to get elemental storm. Elemental storm basically is flat resistance reduction for elemental damage types. And you, I mean, if you're playing fire, then that is obviously a elemental damage type. So for this, you would need more purples. So you could, for example, also like choose quill straight away instead of hawk like i would actually recommend you to take quill instead of hawk and then you take like one more point here into crossroads and then you have rowan's crown which you can put for example to judgment once you have completed rowan's crown you could also actually like get a point to crossroads and then for example take wraith or anything else that gives you like three purple but no greens such as also harvestman's scythe and then drop quill again now the reason why i think you should do this is because i think that for a wire smite skater you don't actually want to like go too much further into like the bottom left corner even though there are some like nice fire devotions like magi and ozin's torch here but i think they're actually not that great for like a wire smite skater but like the only exception maybe being giant's blood also by now you probably don't need the total speed of jackal that badly anymore like you're not gonna default attack anyway that much anymore and if you have like your movement speed capped with like say Mark of the Traveler or like other items that's already great and then you can like spec out of Jackal after taking Ghoul so you like you just have Ghoul as your like defensive devotion here 
and you can like spec out of Jackal again. Also retake the one red one here that you don't need. Also retake the purple one here. And from now on, focus solely on like blue and yellow to try to go for Light of Empyrean. I think Light of Empyrean is actually really, really good for Oath Keepers, especially like Virus Smart Oath Keepers, because when you're playing a skater, you wanna be mobile and just press your virus might all the time and you don't wanna like press many other buttons in between so you kinda only want to have three active devote like three devotions that like proc from actives like Aether of Fire for Virus Might, Eldritch Fire for Guardians of Empyrean and Elemental Storm for Judgment. That's like all you want. Or other procs should be defensive procs that proc off your auras. And one of those procs which actually also deals fire damage is Light of Empyrean. Also on top of that, Light of Empyrean does have a percent reduced target's damage debuff, which is a type of debuff that Oathkeeper lacks. So when you go for like more yellows and blues, which are like the good ones to go for, well the good ones to go for would be Eel, Sailor's Guide, Watcher, Panther, Lion, and or Crane. Now obviously you don't need all of these, choose some of them, not all of them. And if you are at around 30 devotion points now at level 50, I would suggest you to have something like this. And next up, take the Watcher. For items between level 25 and 50, you want to get your hands on either Sand Lizard or Lizard's Archive and then later on the Skybreaker Circlet. Then there is a belt from Act 7. If you like choose to go to Act 7 at around, I don't know, this stage already in normal. The Gargoyle Girdle, if you find it, is like really really good for Oath Keepers as you can see. And for the metal, this is the Mark of Harvul, which you will find in the Tomb of Korvac actually from Harvul the Earthshaker in Act 4. I'll say the only two must-have items here are the Skybreaker Circlet and the Zarthosalans Archive for Virus Might. For attributes, if possible, still pump all of your points to the physique. You might wanna like put more points in the spirit though, especially when you're like using this offhand, right? I mean, you can see that already the level 32 version needs 359 spirit, so you definitely need to have more points in the spirit here. So with a ratio in between like 3 to 1 to maybe like 4 to 1 points into physique and spirit, you should be fine here. Still remember, cunning for whichever weapon you will find and wanna use, you might have to like put some points into cunning here as well. Now what's more note for items and components once you switch over to Wild's Might? is that you probably will need to use some ectoplasm now like ectoplasm is this early on like between level 30 to 50 to 60 70 one of the best ways to get like lots of energy very fast and ectoplasm is a component that goes into your rings amulet and metal so feel free to use like i don't know something between like one up to four ectoplasms here in rings amulets and metal depending on like how much energy you actually need and also like depending on how many like resistance components you can sacrifice for ectoplasms. Once you switch over to virus might and you're able to basically spam those, your energy demand is gonna be pretty crazy. So yeah, you need to get these ectoplasms in there. Also besides my killer and skullbreaker that you can see here, there are two blue items I wanna highlight here that are like really really awesome for virus might. These are random drops, but if you get them, use them, they're really awesome. Number one is Flames Virtue, which has plus two volcanic stride, which is like insane. And number two is the Flame Brand, which also is like pretty nice overall for like fire, burn, damage based builds like this one, because it also has fire resistance reduction on its proc. This one is a level 43 item, and the Flame's Virtue is a level 30 item. Also, to satisfy this energy demand, it will be absolutely crucial to have the Bone Talisman from the early Act 2 quest because of the active, which gives you like lots of energy regen as well. Now, at the very latest, at level 50, you wanna choose your secondary mastery. Now, secondary masteries that are really, really good for virus might skaters would be Demolitionists, Inquisitors, Arcanists. Other variants could also include Soldier, which is really, really great for physical virus might, and also like Warlord is just generally speaking insanely good overall. The Oculus, on the other hand, makes a Sentinel, and the Sentinel is just overall a very, very flexible build. I wouldn't say it's like outstanding for any of the virus might times or like any, um, Oathkeeper build, but it's very very flexible and it can also like support some shenanigans like Chaos Arbor Reckoning and stuff like that. There are some virus mind builds that can also work with a knife blade when you like convert it to cold, but that's kinda not what you wanna do usually. And also there's one that can like work with a shaman when you like wanna convert it to vitality, but that's also like very gear dependent. So might as well just talk about every single monster here, right? Necromancer and Oathkeeper make a very very good class as well, actually. The oppressor very flexible for like um, mostly vitality stuff, some physical stuff, not so much virus might in general, mostly plays around vitality skills from the necromancer itself and not so much around oathkeeper spells usually. Now then, let us use this level 50 template here 
to proceed after level, I don't know, 40 to 50, right, with your secondary class. I'm gonna show you like Demolitionist, Arcanist, and Inquisitor more in depth because those are good for Firewire Smite. So, Demolitionist first up, what you wanna get here is Flame Touched, Vindictive Flame, Blast Shield, and Thermite Mines, basically, right? Obviously, you don't have to like go all the way to 50, right? You just need to like go to 40 here because you might also want to use Black Fox Cocktail, but that's like a maybe actually. Now, what are like the sweet spots here for these abilities? Uh, Flame Touch, you just want to make max this out, right? Hard cap it. Uh, temper, probably just a one pointer with like decent plus all skills to like demolitionists as well. Should have like some decent bonuses here. Blast Shield, um, no matter how many points you have into this, you should try to keep it at either 10. Or 14 points like try to look at the skill and then see whenever it gives you like another plus one percent max all rust so like five is a sweet spot 10 is a sweet spot 14 is a sweet spot and 18 is a sweet spot and also 22 but I have actually rarely or actually like never seen a build that actually has 22 points of blast shield but right, let's put this to 10 points this is like a achievable for every single build right now, Thermite Mines got changed with patch 1.1.8, and they don't give you like 34% elemental resistance reduction at 10 points anymore, they only give you 21%. So for 10 points, that's actually a nerf of 13%, which is huge, and I hope they revert that a little bit. I mean, generally speaking, enemies on patch 1.1.1.8 have 5% less resistances overall, generally, in Elite and Ultimate, but... Also, on the other hand, like all the resistance reduction skills across the board, except for Inquisitor's death sentence, got reduced by 5% to like basically make up for that. Thermite Mine is the only exception, which got like reduced by 13% at the sweet spot, at the former sweet spot. And it has a new sweet spot now actually at 13 out of 16, because it got like at least 2% RR up to 13 out of 16. And now if you compare this 13 out of 16 value to the former 10 out of 16 value, it is still 7% less RR for 3 points more. And I think that's kind of not fair. I think this should be at least like only 5% less for like 3 points more. Honestly, 3 points should also be like worth at least 3% RR, generally speaking. So I think that actually a fair point for this new Thermite Mine would be something like 32% element resistance reduction. Because like all the skills got nerfed by 5%, right? And then this adds 3 points on top there, which is like another 3% back again. So like overall it should have like 2% less than before on the former sweet spot, 10 out of 16. Whether or not Quid is going to change that, we will see. But yeah, I think this should be at 32% RR right now. We'll see. Vindictive Flame, honestly, you don't need the total speed for attack or cast speed that badly. So you just kind of want it like as a one pointer and like the movement speed might have as you as well on top. So if you don't have like 135% movement speed yet, you can consider like putting some more points here. Like each point gives you like 1% more total speed here up to 11 points. But honestly, you can also like just have it as a one pointer and then get like some bonus skills from like your gear on top. And that's like totally fine. Now flashbang is usually a good ability here, but you already have the air reduction on crushing verdict and that doesn't stack with this one. So you want to like choose one and usually since you're like playing around like fire burn anyway, you're probably gonna use judgment, right? Last but not least, there's also the black water cocktail ability, which generally speaking is a pretty nice simulation stability. You have like flat OA direction here, and also if you take the transmitter, you get like a longer duration, and also this will reduce enemy physical damage. And then you have agonizing flames, which would also provide you with flat resistance reduction. If you, however, want to use say in a metal storm anyway. You can just skip this, and if you like skip this, you can also like probably skip this, and then also skip that. And the reason why I actually don't like a cocktail that much on a virus mild skater is, you know, as I said like earlier, I think you want to like just be able to skate around and not care too much about other abilities. But generally speaking, cocktail is a really, really nice ability, and if you want to use it nevertheless, feel free to use it. Now with patch 1.1.8, Ozun's Wrath got damage reduction. And also, Demon Fire got damage reduction actually. So we're gonna talk about these a bit here. So now whenever you use Blackwater Cocktail, you probably will need to use Demon Fire instead or like on top of High Potency if you want to reduce enemy damage. Before, High Potency had like physical resistance reduction, now this is gone. Now, damage reduction, general damage reduction is on Demon Fire instead. But the values are pretty low here, so you like need to invest lots of points here. 
Now, if you don't have lots of bonus skills towards Demon Fire, or like you don't feel like investing too much into Demon Fire, you can invest points into Uzin's Wrath instead. Uzin's Wrath will, however, only work whenever you get hit. And also, it will only affect a certain amount of targets. So, like at level 1, that's 4% damage reduction, 3 targets, right? And that goes like to 7, 3 targets. And then you get like 2% damage reduction per point, with point number 3 giving you 4 targets, point number 6 giving you 5 targets, and then from 8 out of 12 onwards, you will get only 1% damage reduction per point. So one of these sweet spots here for Uzin's Wrath would, for example, be 7 out of 12, because you get like at least 2% damage reduction up to 7 out of 12 points, and also you will have 5 targets affected by this, so as long as there aren't like too many like trash moves around you, you will probably like reliably hit the enemy or nemesis or whatever that like you actually want to fight, and that's like actually scary. I mean, for example, like in an SR situation, Five targets is like totally enough usually, as long as you don't fight against like four Zeterans with like 69 skeletons on top front. You could also put those to 9 out of 12 if you want like the six targets on top, or 12 points for seven targets. After the soft cap, each additional point will give you 1% damage reduction on top, and you get one more additional target at 17 out of 12 points here. And the very last point actually gives you 2% damage reduction again, and also nine targets. It is probably pretty hard to like max out Ruzin's Wrath, and that's also probably only worth it if you are actually playing a retaliation damage build, which like focuses around Uzin's Wrath as well, because Uzin's Wrath also has the retaliation damage added to attack now. But yeah, for a virus might skater, probably something like a one pointer is enough because you are using Light of Empyrean anyway later. If you, however, don't want to use Light of Empyrean, then consider putting more points into either Demon Fire or Uzin's Wrath. Next up we have the Inquisitor. The Inquisitor makes a Paladin, and the Paladin is a very very good fire class overall as well. But there is one thing that you have to change around here, like if you go for Inquisitor as a secondary, you need to take Aura of Sanger because of the elemental resistance reduction, and if you take this one, it was obviously an exclusive, this doesn't work together with Divine Mandate, you would have to take down the Divine Mandate, which means you would lose some crit damage here, but other than that you will still get, gain more damage overall because of the resistance reduction. Also Aura of Sanger does have reduced targets damage, so if you have this debuff here, you should never go for um, this devotion over here. Like Rite of Empyrean is going to be pretty useless then in this case. So you might want to like even go like a little bit more offensive here with your devotions, maybe like for Torch or Magi. Other useful Inquisitor skills that should always be used are with Renewal Line and the Deadly Aim. Deadly Aim is like really good at four points now. Actually, it's like a really nice sweet spot for Deadly Aim now at four points. Uh, however. Soft cap is still also really good. Another usually really good Inquisitor spell is the Inquisitor Seal, but I mean, on a skater where you like want to skate around all the time, I think it's kind of bad actually. So would I actually recommend Inquisitor as a secondary class for a skater? I would personally not recommend it for a skater, but it's still like really really good for like basically all other fire oath keepers. Now the other class I would suggest though for skater as well is the Arcanist, and the Arcanist makes a Templar which is like the classic Fire Smite Skater build, or like class, because there is a set called the Vanquish set, which supports both of these monsters. Now if you go with Arcanus as a secondary, you can choose to either use Star Pact for cooldown reduction, Reckless Power for fire damage and attack speed, casting speed, but honestly those are just inferior to Divine Mandate anyway, so the real choice would be between Divine Mandate for like crit damage, or Star Pact for cooldown reduction. Which one you choose here kind of depends on like your other items, like the rest of your build. Um, I don't really know which one is better for your personal build in this case, but when you don't know which one is better for you, then I would probably rather just tell you to go for Divine Mandate, because then you don't have to take 50 points into Arcanist here. Now while Arcanist doesn't provide you with resistance reduction, it does provide you with some like decent damage and also defensive buffs like you have offensive ability on overload, crit damage on elemental balance, damage absorption, percent damage absorption on Maven Sphere of Protection, CC resistances on conversion, a 3 second invulnerability on Mirror of Eructes, and the nullification skill which can cleanse yourself from debuffs or cleanse enemies from their buffs. Also other useful bone pointers are Arcane Will and Mental Alacrity, and also Fabric of Reality if you choose to go for it. Then on a Virus Might Skater, you probably want to also like use Skeletor's Tempest as a one-pointer with the Wrath of Agravex as well as Inferno, because you're probably gonna play around the Vanquisher set, and that set supports Skeletor's Tempest pretty nicely as well. The Vanquisher set actually also gives Skeletor's Tempest flat resistance reduction, so you wouldn't even need to take Ron's Crown anymore. On top of that, the remaining 12 points should go into Inner Focus, like Inner Focus is really good, so it should be at least soft-capped on pretty much any Arcanist for endgame, 
this is not necessarily really good for leveling, it's like meh for leveling, but it's like huge percent stats for endgame, so yeah, make sure to soft cap this on pretty much any Arcanus later, and if you're doing spirit dump, you can even hard cap this, like just max it out. Sweet spots for these abilities would usually be 12 out of 12 for overload, like the soft cap, soft cap for elemental balance, either 6 or 9 points for conversion, 7 points or 12 points for mirror, and either a 1 pointer or just the soft cap for nullification, because if you soft cap this, it actually does have really nice elemental damage reduction, and also has basically a 100% uptime for that damage reduction. Now for endgame itemization, or like endgame builds in general, I'm gonna give you a link towards these like item skill modifiers for virus mod here and also like talk about some of these items here in a bit. Obviously there's the Skybreaker circuit which you can still use even in the end game for Fire Lightning Vanquisher's Helmet, part of the Vanquisher's set, which is really really good for fire based fire smite. The mythical cinder score is a really nice one handed axe. Gavit of Revenant Souls, pretty nice if you want to play a vitality or physical virus smite. Zarth of Zelens Archive, you should know this one by now. Also, there is a level 94 version of this, so as all of these items also usable for endgame. Defender of the Three, part of the Sentinel of the Three set, is basically a acid retaliation set based around Virus Smite, which you could use on a Sentinel or a Warlord as well. Alchemos's War Sword, this is what I use on my, well, cold Virus Smite meme dervish, kind of. Um, pretty nice if you like want to play a fun dervish. Steward's Halberd, I've not seen anybody make a build around those, but I guess it could work for like a Warlord, for example. Blaze Rush, this one's pretty nice for Shield Breakers, actually. It's a really nice touch if you want to like, go for a little bit more weapon damage heavy and also maybe more armor heavy because this one actually like increases your armor by a lot as well. Really, really nice for like fire, fire smite, sheep breaker. Stone Fist Rebuke on the other hand is like a classic for like a warlord, right? This one is actually more focused around force wave and like the virus smite is just like a side thing usually. Messenger's Blaze Cannon. I don't know, I've not seen a build around this one. Uh, it does seem like okay to use if you like find a good one for leveling, like 2 meter range, 80% weapon damage is pretty nice. Gildor's Pulverizer, this one is around Pierce Wired Smite, which yeah, I have no idea how that's gonna work, but maybe like we'll either not play it as a secondary or something like that. Rutgeist Emblem, yeah, part of the Rutgeist set around like Vitality Wired Smite, which is, as far as I know, kinda underwhelming. Again, because this set has like no CDR to Virus Smite, so Virus Smite is more like a side ability on this build. Shower of Eternal Flame, really nice. Amulet for builds that don't want to use the full Vanquisher set, or like not the Vanquisher set at all. So it also gives you like plus one Demolition Nest, and also has CDR for Virus Smite. Then we have the Mark of Plagueis and the Mark of Harvul. Mark of Plagueis fitting well together with Rodgast set for like Vitality Virus Smite, and Mark of Harvul fitting very well together with, for example, the Stonefather set for Physical Virus Smite which can also be used for Markovian set, actually. Then we have the Blood Stage of Cathon. This is where it kind of starts to become even more meme -y. This one will convert your Virus Might to Kale damage. I have no idea how that's gonna work. And then you also have this Coin of Divine Whispers here, which can roll a Physical to Aether conversion on Virus Might. And the problem with this Aether, Chaos, and also the Pierce Virus Might is that all three damage types have no damage over time component. So your Fire Trail would still be like Fire, your Internal Trauma would still be like Internal Trauma, your Bleed would still be Bleed, I mean, bleed is always bleed because bleed cannot be converted. But yeah, these are more like in the meme section, I think. I just want to highlight one blue endgame set because blue's endgame sets are actually usually very easy to get. These ones are not target farmable, but they are pretty like easy to get nevertheless. And the one I want to show you guys is the Stonefather set. The Stonefather set is pretty nice for physical oath keepers, so like it's very, very good for like a warlord, for example. It has also fire damage actually, so you can make use of your fire trail as well as like a physical fire hybrid kind if you like choose to play around virus mode. But usually you probably like play this on a warlord and just focus on physical damage anyway. And I know that for example Raynan made the build around this one and it was pretty solid. At least for like a beginner build. Also let me just quickly go back to the Vanquisher set. The Vanquisher set is also actually a target farmable set, which means that you can target farm these and the target in this case would be the last chest from the first four roguelike dungeons. The armor would drop from the chest in Steps of Torment, the gem would drop from the chest in Passion of Chaos, the helmet would drop in the chest from Port Valbury, and the mantle will drop in the chest from the Ancient Grove. They don't necessarily have like a high drop chance though, so I would recommend you to still try to target farm something like a good Skybreaker Circlet and a good Zerth Zelens Archive for endgame first, 
and then later you try to get the Vanquisher set. Other items I've seen people use on a build like this would be the Bloodlord's Vengeance for extra duration for Ascension, as well as Pierce and Chaos conversion to Fire to Ascension, which means global conversion while ascension is up and also i've seen people use the flash warp defender actually as a shield which will give judgment less cooldown and also damage reduction which means that then you don't need to take for example the devotion out of empyrean right because you already have damage reduction while the shield on judgment then so this would for example be a very interesting choice for a shield breaker or a templar also if you use this shield and don't have like any other physical to fire conversion to your virus might. What you can always do is just take the volcanic might transmitter here, which will also convert your physical to fire to white might whenever you have a shield or a two-handed mana weapon. And then I just want to like highlight one last item, which is just really, really good overall for any fire oathkeeper and especially shield breakers, which for example also Madagand used, and that is the infernal brimstone and also the mythical infernal brimstone. I wouldn't say this is like best in slot for virus might, not at all. But it's like a very, very solid all around Oathkeeper slash Shieldbreaker fire item. So if you just want to like focus maybe a little bit more on other skills and have like Wire Smite as like an additional thing in there, your Infernal Brimstone might be what you're looking for. Now, Wire Smite being such an iconic spell has been played around multiple times already. So I'm just going to drop some links down below in the description of this video. Check them out for endgame builds, for endgame guides to follow. They should be pretty good, the ones I link you. So. There should be like no need for me to explain them any further. And yeah, that's how you will have fun playing Virus Might in the end game as well. I will probably do a Virus Might skate through myself as well pretty soon. So once that one is out, check it out as well. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much everybody for watching. And if you have any questions regarding Oathkeeper or like any other Grim Dawn related stuff, feel free to ask them down below in the comments. Also, yeah, don't forget to check out all the links and other guides down below in the comments and on my channel as well. And yeah, I hope to see you around on my next video. Bye-bye.